Hi, I'm Ken Sapola, and thank you for watching today. And before I forget to do this at the end of the video, like I've been on most of these videos, I want to encourage you to like, share, subscribe, and comment on our channel and on any of these videos, the ones that have blessed you, the ones where God has touched you and gave you something new, some new revelation. If it helped you, it will certainly help someone else. We know that this word has power and it packs a punch. And so uh, share it with your friends and your family, uh, your colleagues at work, just randomly put it on your Facebook wall or your YouTube channel um, and uh, help us get this word out that Jesus is engrafted. He is the engrafted word. He is in each and every one of these letters. Uh, again, like, share, subscribe, and comment. We'd like to know, um, we'd like to know how this word has blessed you and how it's, um, how it's been working for you. So uh, today we're going to go into a Christmas and New Year word. Praise God and, uh, on behalf of us to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, we trust that this video finds you blessed healthy and whole. You're going to go into 2019 highly favored. This is going to be the best year yet. It's not going to be the best year ever, but it's going to be the best year yet. Up to this point, this will be the best year. Next year will be even better. From glory to glory. We believe it. We decree it in Jesus' name. May 2019 be the best year you've had to date. So this message is going to be just on uh, just on Jesus. It's going to be a well. All our messages are going to, are on Jesus, but this one we want to talk about um, Jesus in Christmas, and um, also about New Year, New You. So, um, so let's go into it. Luke chapter two and verse seven. Luke chapter two, verse seven. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. In the end. So that's where we're going to begin. But before we go on any further, I'd like to remind you to get a something to write with, something to write on, and get your Bible ready. When the Lord stands something out to you, when there's a, a letter or a word that just kind of pops out off the screen or off of your off of your Bible, make sure you jot it down. Pause the video if you have to, come back to it later, but meditate on it. The purpose of these videos is for you to get revelation of Jesus in these words. And let him guide you, let him instruct you, let the Holy Spirit minister to you through these, uh, through these words and through these letters. And, uh, and let him do what he does best and just love on you. So, uh, do that, pause it, go get it, and then come back and hit play again. Or bring your phone with you while you're going around searching for your stuff. So... Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 7 is where we're kicking off. Now, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Right over in verse 4, we see that he was born in Bethlehem. Um, Bethlehem in the Greek is Bethlehem, is the way that it's uh, pronounced there. I'm not going to write down the Greek word Bethlehem, because we're going to go into the Hebrew today about this word Bethlehem. Bethlehem. And it comes from the Hebrew uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, and it looks like this. This is the word Bethlehem or Bethlehem, and obviously it's a it's a compound word. These are actually two different words brought together to say. I'll tell you what this means, but um, let, let me. So that ch, it's a it's that guttural sound, the ch lechem, bet lechem, and what this means is house of bread. Bet lechem is house, bet is house, and lechem is bread, house of bread. And that's where the, um, the Greek word of Bethlehem came from, and where um, our word Bethlehem, or how we pronounce it as Bethlehem, came from. So, um, bet, I'll put it down over here as well. So, Beit Lechem, just to break that down so you can kind of see it um, in a different, see it side by side, that Beit 
is house. Lechem is bread or food or grain. Bread, food, or grain. So now let's look at this word manger. Let's look at the word manger in, um, in the Greek. The word manger in Greek, uh, in that verse 7, where it says, laid him in a manger, um, is the word uh, fate. I have run out of room. Fate. And what that means is a crib or a manger. Crib, manger. And, and what, where this word fate comes from is the word uh, pateomai. And pateomai, pateomai is where we get the word fate, so I didn't spell it down here, but I'll spell it here. Fate in English and pateomai in English underneath. What that means is to eat, to eat. So Jesus, which is a compound of Yehovah and Yasha, that means our God saves, right? Um, Jehovah saves. Yasha is saves. Uh, Yeshua is um, Yehovah. So, or <laughs> it's Yehovah Yasha. That's where Yeshua comes from, is Yehovah Yasha. Uh, Jehovah saves. And so Jesus, Jehovah saves, was born in the house of bread and was laying in a manger, which means to eat. So this Christmas, um, you, you've already celebrated Christmas. Um, we want to encourage you that this year going forward, that you partake of Jesus more this year. That when you go into the Word, you go in it to receive revelation of Jesus. You go into this year being more determined than ever to know Jesus better than the year before. Better than the year before. Jesus, I want to know you more. Go into this year wanting more of Jesus, more of Jesus. Now watch this, this word lechem, this word lechem comes from the word lechem. And it's spelt the same, but the nikud is, um, is different. So this is lamed, chet, and mem, lamed, chet, and mem, Lechem, or this one's Lacham, what this means is to fight or do battle, to make war. Why? Why did bread come from the fighting? Well, because when you knead the dough, it's like fighting. You're putting, you're putting in this energy to create the dough. The flour and the water are coming together and it turns into a dough and you have to knead it. So you're like pounding it and crushing it. So don't fight your battles without partaking of this bread that was laying in a manger. Eat the bread who was born in the house of bread. Over in John chapter 6, watch this. John chapter 6 and the 48th verse. John chapter 6 verse 48. Jesus said, I am that bread of life. He was talking about manna. And how, oh, your fathers did eat of manna that was given from, by Moses, but I am the bread of life that was given by the Father. He who eats of me, he who eats of me shall not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, he said in verse 51. Jesus is this bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life. So I'm going to put up here... Jesus, the bread of life, born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, and he was laying in a manger, which means to eat. It means to eat. Now, who eats out of a manger? What is this manger in this crib? It's actually a feeding trough. Animals eat from the feeding trough. 
And I had this idea and I thought to the Lord and I said, wow, Lord, you know what? Sheep also eat from the feeding trough. And so we as sheep come to the feeding trough and we partake and we eat of Christ all that we want. And then the Lord said, hold it. It's not just sheep that eat from that, that trough. It's all types of animal. It's all types of people. See, sheep, you, you're not a sheep unless you have Jesus as your shepherd. You're not his sheep. So when you have Jesus as your shepherd, you become sheep. You become his sheep. So to say that only sheep eat from this manger means that only those who are saved. But Jesus said, I did not come for the saved. I came for the unsaved. I came for those who need a, need a healer. I came for those who need a savior. So this trough, this feeding trough that God laid his son in is for anyone to come and partake. So whether you know him or don't know him, you can partake of Jesus, this bread of life, no matter what walk of life you are of. Eat and partake of Jesus. Jesus said, eat of me, eat of me. In fact, he said it down here uh, within the same um, uh, same sequence of, of verses, but over in verse 53. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. Partake and eat of Christ and eat all that you want. Take and take more. The problem isn't, okay, so you have people who don't know Jesus. The problem there is that no, they're not eating from him at all. But within are, within the, those who do believe in Jesus, the problem isn't not eating, it's not eating enough. Don't be afraid to take more and take more and take more. Going into 2019, you take more from Jesus. You eat of him. See, so when you think about eating, he didn't say snack on me occasionally. Snack on me when you feel a little peckish. Snack on me when you're feeling a little famished. No, it's a continual eating. You're constantly feeding. This is eating. You have a diet plan of Christ Jesus, his body, and you partake of him. Partake, partake, partake. He is the word. So this is how we get this done now. How do we feed on him? How do we eat continuously, continuously of him? See, for, for, for Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birth. And so how do we, why are we celebrating his birth? Because the bread of life was born in the house of bread. <laughs> bread is made in the house of bread. And here he is, the bread of life, born in the house of bread, laid in a manger, which means to eat in the exact feeding trough. Come and eat of me freely. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Now, since we're talking about eating, let's talk about the new year. Have you noticed how many commercials are on TV about diet plans, about diet fads, eating this and eating that? It happens every single year, and it makes sense because people have these new year resolutions. But I tell you to watch your diet this year in 2019 and partake of Jesus, but don't eat a little. Gorge yourself upon his word. You gorge yourself and eat all that you can possibly eat. Look at this over in Romans chapter 10. Or actually, Luke chapter 4, verse 4. We're going to start there. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. It says, in short, I, well, I'm, I'm just giving you the, uh, the, this piece here. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? But by every word of God. But by every word of God. That means, now let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And then I'll tell you what that means. Now, Luke 4, that was Jesus being... Um, tempted by the devil. The devil said, oh, if you're really the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. And he said, but man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. John chapter one, Jesus being the word. John chapter six, Jesus said, eat of me. And then he said, he that eats my flesh shall have eternal life shall have eternal life. This means Jesus, our faith, Jesus, our faith, the house of bread, the bread of life, we partake of him and our faith rises up. So partake of Jesus so that you can go into this new year with this activated faith, receiving your abundance of harvest, and you can see the move of the Holy Ghost and fire flowing in and through you and through your household in this year of 2019, through, uh, through the entire year. 
by eating of his flesh, by eating, partaking fully, and gorging yourself upon his word. You can never eat enough. This word to eat in the Greek is the word trago. It does mean to chew and it means to gnaw. You know, you, you chew on it. You're not just having a snack here and there. No, you're gorging yourself and you're constantly feeding upon it. You're getting the word and you're just chewing, chewing, gnawing. When he gives you something, oh, chew on it all day. And you don't snack, chew, eat, have full meals. Praise God, have full meals, eat of Jesus, eat of Jesus. Um, I've ran out of room on my whiteboard um, to, um, to put all this, but I want to show you something just real quick about eating eating and this is and we're going to close on this message with this and this is the word um ochil or achil so in the ancient so in the hebrew uh the way that you would uh write this is aleph chav and lamed so you have aleph chav and lamed if you can see that down there aleph chav Lamed, achil. So the nikku there is achil. And this means to, uh, this means to eat, devour, to feed, to burn up. And what this com where this comes from, now this is the, um, this is the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, an ox head. This is a palm. And this is a shepherd's hook. I'm running out of space on this board, so pardon me for the smaller writing. But essentially, it still means the same thing, eat and food. Now, through sustenance, one becomes whole or satisfied. One becomes whole through sustenance. We're going to put become whole. This year, you will become whole the more you eat of his word, the more you become whole when you partake of this bread of life. Jesus, the bread of life. Um, now, these two, now the root of this is the kuf and the lamed. So this is aleph, which is the ox head, and that means strength. So of course, you know, you're gonna have strength the more that you eat. Strength is really the healing, properly um, healing what you need is strength, and you need the strength of God. So to become whole, you need the strength of God. To have the strength of God, you need to partake of Jesus, the bread of life. You're getting it. Praise God. Now, to eat, you have the strength of God, the chuf, the kaf, which is the palm, and then you have the lamet, which is the shepherd's hook, and, and that means authority. Now, when you put these two together, this is the root. When you have the chuf, chuf, and the lamet. So I'm just going to put that down here, the best that I can, which equals a shepherd's hook and the palm. The shepherd's hook, this is a shepherd's staff or yoke, and this is a bent palm representing the bending or the subduing of the will. Now when you put these together, what it means is complete vessel and whole. And it also means tame for the yoke. Tame for the yoke. What is the yoke? Or, or what is the, what is, yeah, the, the yoke is what connects, like the ox, for example, you can, you can connect two animals together. Well, you don't put two strong animals together. You want the stronger and the older along with the younger and the weaker. Well, our yoke, Jesus said, take upon, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. It's light. It's easy to carry. It isn't burdensome. He's stronger than us and he can teach us. And so when we put it upon us by feeding on his word, we're feeding his word, we're putting it on us, we become tame for that yoke that we can be led by the Spirit of God into 2019, seeing the Holy Ghost and fire operating through us. The abundance of harvest and our, act, and our faith activated in this year of 2019. Being tamed. What is being tamed? Tamed is putting the soil to the plow, a harvesting of crops. 
one eats once the harvest is complete. It said that 2019, through Kenneth Copeland Ministries, that this would be the year of abundant harvest. And I believe it. When you eat upon his word, the harvest shall be complete and you'll see it done. You will be made whole. You will be set free. And you will be complete. Your vision will come to pass in this year, 2019. Jesus, the bread of life, born in the house of bread, laid in a manger so that we can eat of him and partake. And when we do eat, we become strong, tamed for the yoke, and we become whole. Where we can be led by the Spirit of God without condemnation, guilt, shame, or inferiority, but we can walk on in our righteousness because Jesus, our righteousness, our faith, carries us through with this yoke, the yoke of faith. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.